In their ongoing mission to solve the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle, deep sea divers Mike Barnett and Jimmy Gadomsky are heading out to investigate a new target called Red Snapper Sink. I've known about Red Snapper Sink for many years. It's always been on the back burner just because of the logistics to get out there to do a long dive, because we're thinking potentially this is gonna be 500 feet or deeper. No one's been to the bottom of this sinkhole. No one's documented the true depth. I mean, I gotta get out there and, and get to the bottom of it. Red Snapper Sink near the Bermuda Triangle is one of the targets on Barnett's map of wrecks. It's a mid-ocean sinkhole, also called blue holes. Hundreds may be in this part of the ocean. These holes can reach depths of more than 600 feet and feature unexplored cave systems. One of the most curious stories coming out of this area off St. Augustine and Red Snapper Sink is the disappearance of a slew of ships back in the 17th century. And of course, this area was also a hotbed of pirate activity. In 1684, a fleet of six ships under the command of English pirate Thomas Jingle were preparing for a daring raid on the Spanish port of St. Augustine. So we have a raiding force of six ships on their way to hit St. Augustine. Five of them disappear without a trace. Again, another incredible mystery in this part of the Bermuda Triangle. The disappearance of Jingle's fleet, you know, has baffled people for over three centuries. In that time, nobody has found a single trace of any of those missing ships. Now that's strange. When currents moving in opposite directions on a large body of water collide, they merge and flow in a circular formation. If there is a pit or hole beneath the flow that's deep enough, it can create a powerful vortex that spins inward and down like water circling a drain. If whirlpools do form around Red Snapper and other ocean sinkholes, are they powerful enough to swallow a ship, accounting for some of the Bermuda Triangle disappearances? If that's the case, the team could find evidence of Jingle's fleet at the bottom. As far as the team knows, no diver has ever been to the bottom of Red Snapper Sink. Its estimated depth is 400 feet beneath the ocean floor. Few divers in the world have the experience to even attempt it, let alone survive. Finally, 380 feet down, Mike Barnett and Jimmy Gadomsky become the first known divers in history to reach the bottom of Red Snapper Sink. And the 15-minute clock starts. Mike Barnett suddenly spots something. Yeah, from a distance, I saw this. I was like, what is that? Straight edges. It looks man-made. They were all different sizes, which was kind of weird. They wasn't consistent from one to another. Some of them were 20 feet, maybe like eight meters in length, and probably a good six feet, two meters in width. Some were laying flat, some were piled on top of each other. The objects look to be made of stone. Could they be remnants of Thomas Jingle's doomed pirate fleet or their cargo? Answers will have to wait. Time's up. The team needs to start their slow ascent to the surface before the crushing impacts of this depth start to take effect. What's up? That was awesome. Yeah. Good dive. So what do you think? It looked like man-made structure at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, look, it definitely something man-made. I think we need to show the, the footage to the team and get yeah. them together and, and back on shore and see what they think of what causes, what, what are these yes. structures? Back on land, Barnett and Gadomsky meet up with two of the other core members of the team. So this is the stone here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Look at the straight edge right up at the top. Mm -hmm. that this is a flat is surface, not too. not natural. That is man-made. So, theories, thoughts? I mean, is it something from a ship? Could they have belonged to Thomas Jingle's lost pirate fleet? Or has the team found something even more mysterious? Obviously, if you want to hide secrets, this is a great place to, to put your secrets. So we don't know, but figuratively and literally, we want to get to the bottom of this. The team splits up to follow the trail. Mike and Jimmy will prepare for a second dive on Red Snapper Sink. 
Meanwhile, Wayne and David head to the Bahamas and the site of the Bermuda Triangle's deepest known ocean sinkhole, Dean's Blue Hole. They're looking for evidence that these holes in the ocean produce whirlpools strong enough to pull down ships like Captain Jingles. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> for this mission, the team has called in marine biologist Thomas Eiliff, an expert on Dean's Blue Hole, and underwater photographer Evan Kovacs. The plan is to use a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, to get to the bottom of Dean's to see if there are any ships that have been pulled down. There's the first cool. images. Come on, baby. Damn. Something weird. Yeah. Me. See those? I think they are little bits of algae that are being sucked in by the current. OK. Look at the sand. Sand moving down. There's a yeah. flow. So could it be that we created the fall on the way down? And now it's starting to. No. I don't think so, because no, you can see a continuous flow of sand going over the edge, going down. Gotcha. That sand's got to be going somewhere. It can't be going in at this rate for thousands and thousands of years without filling the place up. So somewhere that sand is being sucked down deeper or farther or something. 600 miles away at Red Snapper Sink, Barnett and Jimmy are about to make their second dive. Just how big is this cave system? And have they just scratched the surface on a potential lead for multiple missing ships in the Bermuda Triangle? The divers reach the bottom, and the clock starts. The divers discover even more of the cut rock slabs. The whole bottom is covered in it. Perfect right angle. It's just sitting on the bottom. The team scrambles to find hard evidence that would support the idea that these slabs are ballast, the remnants of a pirate fleet. As the clock ticks down, they look out for any signs of a cave system on the edges of the pit. And then, time's up. But as the team reaches the top of their ascent, Barnett suddenly spots a new clue not at the bottom of Red Snapper Sink, but at the top. Well, guys, we had an awesome dive in Red Snapper Sink, but I want to hear how it went with you guys in the Bahamas. How'd it go? We did get some footage. So there you go. We, yeah, that's where we land. On and the bottom. What we think is the bottom, because Tom suspected, uh, based on what we had seen here, that this goes a lot deeper than 660 feet down. We're on the top of the sand cone that's going down, and that there are long, long caves that have been sucking in the sand for, you know, decades, if not centuries. And if Tom's theory is correct, all we had to do was get down one of the slopes down to the bottom. There is a, a true whirlpool effect with Dean Blue Hole, depending on the tide, but we couldn't explore it to see if there was any kind of cave system. But we did make the bottom. We just weren't able to go anywhere. But we're eager to find out what you found. What do you think it is? It wasn't until we got up shallow enough that uh, we had, I think, a clear evidence of what was going on. So you'll see we're coming up the side of the, the sinkhole, and our anchor line is resting against the sinkhole. And it's, the, and it's rubbing against the rim. And this is very, it's very, very, very soft limestone. Our anchor line was basically almost a foot in, gotcha. just sawing away like butter. It's cutting no straight way. into the rock. And as I looked on the side of that, there was another cut mark parallel to that. So the light bulb, poof, the, the, the anchor lines are sawing away. And if it eventually wow. it twists a little bit, it's going to scissor it off, and mm -hmm. that slab is going to fall to the bottom. That's why there's so many. And that's why it's perfectly smooth. People are fishing this nonstop. This is a common fishing, uh, common fishing spot. So basically, it's man-made-ish. <laughs> In other words, unintentional, but man-made nonetheless. Definitely. Despite the challenges, the team's investigations of Red Snapper Sink and Dean's Blue Hole have led to intriguing discoveries. 
We've heard a lot of legend and lore associated with Red Snapper Sink. When we got to the bottom, we see these shapes in the distance and the gloom. We're like, were these stories true? To bring back an answer for what caused that, that was really gratifying. It was amazing that we were the first ones to drop an ROV and get to the bottom and just get those first images. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, that constant fall of sand. Who knows what has been covered up by years and years of that constant drip. What is clear is that these holes in the ocean are capable of tremendous power and peril. Their secrets are only just starting to surface. And with hundreds more out there waiting to be explored, they could very well be key in solving the bigger mystery of the Bermuda Triangle.